everybody. Welcome to Kirby Connects, where this year, in 2023, we are reading through the Bible chronologically. And one of the things I really am enjoying about it is it's painting a picture of God's grand theme, and it's about the story of redemption. And our goal is, as we read through the scriptures, we want to keep pointing you towards that, the, you know, the story of redemption and God's love for humanity and the greatest gift ever, Jesus Christ, dying on the cross for our sins, his return, and uh, kingdom and heaven forever and ever. And so we want to paint that picture for you as we go along. So everybody's here today. And uh, so guys, I thought I would just enter a, a real quick question. All you got to do is, is a yes or no. You know, COVID's a little bit in the rearview mirror. Do any of you still wear masks? <laughs> <laughs> only, like we're like on a plane. Only when, like it's, not a plane. Only, yes. only when it might be necessary. What motives are behind what motives? No. Wait, wait. The health of all involved. <laughs> Is it affected by how many people are in a row? <laughs> You guys, yeah, I mean, aren't you thankful real. that we're beyond that now? I'm thankful. <laughs> Some of us. <laughs> so, yeah. I've so heard stories lately, people yeah. using it for ill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 For their own gain. Extending, yeah. 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 Extending the yeah. period of COVID. Would you care to elaborate? It's called mass gaining. It's called mass gaining. Mass gaining. Not shaming. Mass gaining. Go ahead and, and tell us mass gaining. Oh, uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just that's awesome. People just use them, using them for their own purposes, which yeah. may not be medicinal. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm real, I'm more comfortable when there's an empty seat in my row. <laughs> Is there a way down on, on, on an airplane? Not in church. No, no, no. Airplane. I want those all full. Yeah. But like on, on a plane, I I do like one empty seat down. Is there a way to accomplish that in our current <laughs> climate? <laughs> Sometimes you just cough a little and throw a mask on. <laughs> Huh, I never it. thought of that. Sometimes yeah. it works as Zorba's if I don't want anyone sitting next to me. Oh, yeah. It's a whole lifestyle. So Sunday oh. morning, if Don coughs close to you, Sit by. he could be one. <laughs> more space. More I, need, space. I need more personal space. More space. You know, if you see the mask hanging oh, out in the back pocket, oh, yeah. you know, kind of clear Super up. thankful, though, that we came through that time. Mostly on the other end. Yeah. Yeah, I just keep digging yourself a hole. Yeah, you're just trying to get out of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are, in, we are in the Egypt and the Exodus period, mm. and where we are really at is like the birth of the nation of Israel. God calling Moses to lead his people who were blessed by Joseph through Pharaoh and God, and they just exploded in growth in Goshen, and now they are... Um, out of Egypt, they've crossed the Red Sea, and uh, or they've crossing the Red Sea, and yep. now they're getting ready for their very, very first Passover. All of these things that we're going to mention today are foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. um, foreshadowing is just giving us a glimpse, you know, kind of like a um, you get to see it for just a second, and then but then. Later on, it's revealed. It's kind of like a clue in a, in a crime filler, filler? <laughs> thriller <laughs> movie. You know, it, yeah. it's this little piece that mm -hmm. points to a greater uh, picture, later a little on. puzzle piece that points to a greater picture on down the road. And so we're starting to get these about Jesus Christ and about redemption as we go through. All right? So, uh, so we're in Exodus 13, and they mm -hmm. are, um, they have... Um, crossed the Red Sea, correct? Well, they've left Egypt. I have not. I was absent last week. I was uh, uh, on vacay. I read it. Uh, but uh, now we are escaping through the Red Sea mm -hmm. in Exodus. And the, ex the Exodus. Yes. In Exodus 14. <laughs> and, uh, and this is important. Now, the, the Red Sea is not this little, mm. little lake. This is a, a healthy body of water. And, but God's the creator of water. He took the the H and the and the O and the H two and Couple put it with O's. the O and all that <laughs> and, two and, H's. and made water. Yeah. And and so it is really a, a cool thing. Uh, as you guys were reading through the story of the Exodus, maybe um, the release of them, and then heading through, and then up against the Red Sea, and 
and Moses parting the water. Any thoughts come to... You know, I, I love all the way as early as Exodus 15 in verse 13. So they, they just got through the whole <clears throat> Red Sea experience and, and Moses comes up with a song. Uh, in verse 13 it says that with your unfailing love you... Uh, you have redeemed the, you, the people you love. You have redeemed, and it, are, it goes to that concept already of God redeeming His people. <clears throat> the moment they leave, live, they leave Egypt, and it just keeps on with that theme that, like you said later on, uh, the fulfillment, the true full fulfillment of that is found in Christ. That He uses redemption words, He uses ransom, redeemed, uh, just over and over. Through everything that we read today. Yeah. Well, one of the things, too, as they escape is the, is the miracle. And everybody knows that Sunday school story, so we're not going to go there. But the people's response when they are on the other side of the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. Pharaoh's army is destroyed. They are a free people. And now they're three days down the pike um, <clears throat> at Mirah. And they complain against Moses. Yeah. And, and here is like every time some little pushback happens, you know, mm -hmm. that they would push back against Moses. And I'm thinking if there's any dude I'm not messing with, it's Moses. I mean, he just parts the water, had the ten plagues in Egypt. I'm not messing with that guy. Yeah. But every time... And, it, and I'm always amazed at the short span of time it takes mm. to go from pra praising to complaining. Yep. Yeah. I love how Moses sets them straight, like, right away. Uh, they're complaining to Moses and Aaron, and right away he says, your, your problem's not with me. Your problem's with yep. God. Mm -hmm. yep. You're mm -hmm. not complaining about me. Who am I? <clears throat> You're yeah. complaining about God. Mm -hmm. yeah, and that time frame that Pastor Mike talked about is one of the things that stood out to me. It was like, this is literally four, uh, the chronological Bible I was studying was 1446 BC and literally so in a span of less than a year they go from the plagues and seeing God's power and then the exodus uh, which literally means exa in the uh, exa means uh, out of and adus means a road so the literal meaning is a road out of a road out of and that's what that's what the Exodus is. It's, it's, a, it's a road out of, but just this short time span that happens. It's actually measured in months, where they go from the plagues to the huge complaining to the manna, and then the huge complaining and disobedience in the wilderness. And they saw all God's power and movement. This group of about two million people, and yeah. uh, and 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 they've seen this. But how quickly, as humans, we turn. Yeah, and mm -hmm. and it's in it because because they complained at Mara. That was just a day's journey. Mm -hmm. Uh, verse 24 says, and the people complained and turned against Moses. Then in Exodus 16, uh, it talks about they set out for the, the wilderness of sin, and then they, uh, there too, the whole community, verse 2, complained yep. against Moses about mm -hmm. Moses and Aaron. I just want to make a point here that if you've got a chronic complaining spirit, you will have major issues in trusting God mm -hmm. for anything. Mm -hmm. There is not a there is just a fine little baby step between complaining and not trusting. Matter of fact, every time that they complained against Moses and Aaron, God looked at that as a sign of disobedience and mm -hmm. a lack of trust. Yeah. And it was complaining. And there is something about a critical spirit, a complaining heart. That takes us away from God, off-center, mm -hmm. takes us away from God instead of to God. And that's one of the stories, and yet God still loves Israel yeah. and keeps providing mm -hmm. for that's them fine, yeah. when a lot of us would have sent you know, the kids to the room and said, you're grounded. Yep, you're ungrateful. Yeah, you're un <laughs> you're yeah. Ungrateful. yeah, exactly. So anyway, fast-forwarding then uh, a bit, um, we also see themes like... Um, um, the Mosaic Covenant. And that's very important. And it, it's a reaffirming of the Abrahamic Covenant that God would bless with a land of people uh, and throughout, because of them, the whole world would be blessed and, and that God would honor his law and honor mm -hmm. his word. Uh, and then we have the names of God starting to come up. 
you know, with a little yeah. more frequency, mm -hmm. different names. You know, we, we saw them with Abraham in Genesis, a little bit with Isaac, kind of took, a, you know, maybe one spot with Jacob and then just kind of took a little, a little break. But uh, what are some of the names that you guys saw that uh, just reach up to you? So every name uh, is about an attribute or about, it, they define the identity of God. So... Tells us about his character. It does. Yes, and about who he is. And again, all of these were fulfilled with Christ when he came. One of them that just hit me, but it wasn't in this week's reading, but Amy and I just had a conversation about it last week, was that he's the God who sees. And I believe yeah. it's El Roy. El yeah. And that, that was it just it just that is one that means so much to me is that and it's so many different ways that God sees us, um, but that, that that He's aware of what you're walking through. So yeah, that He was when He was when Hagar was exactly. you know, being mistreated by Sarah, and so so that, that's going backwards. But it's just one of my favorite names of God. In he the named the well after that, Bir Lahai Roy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the well of the God who sees. Mm -hmm. So then we come through, and then and you start getting things like the law, and the feast of the tabernacle, or, or the feast and the tabernacle. Uh, all of these again pointing towards our need for worship, mm -hmm. our need to be connected to God, the Creator, uh, God's plan of redemption. That you know that there's this exchange going on. Mm -hmm. We bring barley, we receive, and give thanks, we receive. You know, forgiveness. So we present an animal sacrifice and we give a life, an animal sacrifice to obtain life. And, and so it, it's that reoccurring theme through scripture that God um, does not want to leave us. God wants to come to us and be a part of us. And we were talking earlier today, yeah. Emory, about the whole law thing and, and mm -hmm. why the law stressed the holiness and it was really yeah. so God could be with his people. Absolutely, because you have to preserve the holiness of God that's unchangeable and then the passion and desire of God to be among his people and for that to happen the holiness has to be preserved. That's why so many different details, so many different rules, you know, why do I need to know how long this is, how high this is, why this is here, all the <clears throat> wild details about what they need to wear and all, all the process for coming into the presence of God because God is holy but in the middle of that God still desires to be there among his people he's not a God far off he's a God in the midst of them traveling with them as they go and God has always wanted to be his people right? yeah. I mean gen, uh, the Garden of Eden mm -hmm. right and, uh, and, and you can just see again throughout. Um, by the way, does anybody, the, the cool thing about the feast days is that it established a, some spiritual traditions for the families to hang on to. Yeah. And for mm -hmm. the nation of Israel to hang on to. That was one of the parts I loved. He, he talks about it in Exodus 13 and in Exodus 16. That's something that I don't think we do enough today. But he's giving them specific instructions on holding on to things. Um, so that they can tell their kids and the future generations about how God delivered them. Um, and in chapter 16, uh, it says, Then Moses said, uh, This is what the Lord has commanded. Fill uh, a two-quart container with manna to preserve it for your descendants. Then later generations will be able to see the food I gave you in the wilderness uh, when I set you free from Egypt. Uh, and then you see the same thing um, in chapter 13 when he's talking about the Passover talks about doing this so that you can tell your children, they can tell their children, so it will continue on over and over and over. Uh, and I love that example, but again, I think it's something that we have to be very intentional about today yeah. uh, in family settings, whether it's spouse with spouse or, or parents with children, is is sharing those God stories mm -hmm. of, of you know being relatable and saying, you may be going through this, man, let me share with you something that God brought me through, or mm -hmm. celebrating those moments yeah. um, that God has brought us through. <laughs> I thought that like in our culture, uh, there's, there's such a pull toward the markers that we do have. So if Christmas is a marker, it's like you have to be so intentional to make Christmas be about Jesus, mm. the birth of Jesus. Yeah. If Easter is a marker, you have to be so intentional. Like 
I, th I think the, the marker that we do the best with is Good Friday because it's hard to commercialize Good Friday. <laughs> but you have, to, you have to be so intent on it not becoming... Christmas is about presents and about family and about getting together. Well, okay, that's great, but it, it's no longer a marker. Easter is, is about the fact that he rose from the grave and is setting us free from the bondage of sin and death. Like, that's what it is. But in our culture... Like, you have to so anchor yourself that to not drift away to lesser purposes, even for the markers that we do have. Mm -hmm. And, and you got to remember, these guys are a month from seeing the Red Sea part. Yeah. You know? And it don't take long. Maybe two months from <laughs> seeing the whole ten plagues in Egypt kind of roll out in front of them. Well, let's fast forward to, let's fast forward to Aaron and the story of, of the golden calf. And Exodus 22. We were talking earlier. This is, of, of all the stories in Exodus, this is the one I, and maybe it's because I, I pastor, I, I don't know, but this is the one I just kind of go, oh, really? Aaron, how could you do this? And we talked about it. I still don't have any <laughs> answers, but good news for you today. Clayton, Emery, and Don have the answer. Especially the Don. Story. Especially Don. He's got his so, no. so so the ten the Ten Commandments had just been had just been given. Moses is actually on the mountain and it, it all is from this Mosaic covenant of from Mount Sinai, where it's all about obedience. It's all about showing love to God and obedience. And it was laid out in ten commands, first four of which are between us and God, the last six of which are between us and one another, as how we relate to one another. And out of these ten commandments, as God is just sharing with Moses, then Aaron is there on the ground with these two million folks, yep. and he just he is wanting to please them, and he is unsure, I guess, of his leadership. Unsure, of, I don't know, I don't know what he, but he chooses to have everybody throw in all that all their jewelry, and he says, and out jump this calf, yeah, out jump this yeah. golden just, calf, just Moses. I, I don't know just how pop. it happened. Uh, I mean, I mean, and and so he's got them worshiping this. And the scary thing to me was, he attributed the day following that as a feast and a festival unto the Lord. Yeah. And it was all, it's just all messy. It's like it's either God's like either you obey me in this treaty and this covenant that we've made, you either obey me. But Aaron's just wanting to get all messy and taking a little bit of this and a little da uh, a little dabble here and just making a mess of worshiping God. Yeah, yeah, it's. One of the things that really stuck out to me in the whole story, and I, I think it happens today too, and it's really sad to look at, is God is literally telling Moses he's setting up Aaron and Aaron's sons to be the priests. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. while God is talking to him at the same time, Aaron is telling them, yeah, give me your jewelry. Let's, yeah. let's cast something for you to worship. Yeah. And there's just like, the priest God. all the way to Jesus. It's like so much is being established right here, and it's... Mm -hmm. and it's but it's, it's, it's easy for us to look at oh. that, but I think the same thing can happen is, man, we never know what Absolutely. God is wanting to do in us mm -hmm. and through mm -hmm. us and all of that. But, man, at the same time, we could be sitting there making yes. the wrong Just choice Ooh. and choosing yeah. sin over God. At the inception God. of God wanting to do something yeah. great in our lives, we're choosing some sinful yeah. uh, way to Far somehow us. that makes some logical sense in our mind. And his first big moment without Moses. Mm. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it, it, it's and again, it's how quickly we can go from a spiritual high to a complaining low. Yeah, yeah. It, we, we can go from yeah. being, you know, on fire for God, you know, just we ain't backing down for nothing, mm -hmm. and then being afraid to take a stand to do what's right when we know it's the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know of a church, a, a, a conservative evangelical church. If Aaron had been their pastor and had done this in the congregation, would have kept him. Right, right. But God mm. kept him. Woo. Yeah. There were other I never people. About that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. There but were other people. He was God accomplishing said, his plan through Aaron, him. Wow. Step wow. aside. Yep. Your first Absolutely. Born, next up, or Absolutely. high priest is. I gave you a chance. You blew it. Yep. I gave you a chance. You blew it. it. I mean, because even yep. part of me says you should have God. Yeah. You know, I, you know, and, and there is a bit of me that wants there, to go. God, you at least a little, smack yeah. him upside the head. Or something. <laughs> well, Moses, Moses, yeah, <laughs> Moses, Moses did. made Moses, him drink yeah. verbally, made him drink, yeah. 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 ground up, the, the, ground up, the, the, the made them all drink it. Yeah, yeah. but here, here's the thing again. Here's the thing again. Mm. When all of us would go, yeah, yeah. why didn't God do You're that? You're right. Yeah. The reason is God is long suffering, yeah. not willing that any should perish. 
but mm-hmm. all come to repentance. Mm-hmm. And that's the purpose yeah. of Christ, and that's the grand story of redemption uh, in the scriptures. Absolutely. I, what Don said, I think there's a parallel for us. You know, So Aaron's like, yeah, we're still going to offer our offering to Yahweh. We're still going to do that yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. What a mess. But, but like, I mean, it's so easy for us to fall into that. Well, what do you mean? I'm, I'm good. Like, I went to church last Sunday, mm-hmm. but like the rest of life is my own, and I'm <laughs> off. I'm off chasing that. But what do you mean? Like I like I yeah. tied like last month, or I went to mm-hmm. church the other day, or you know we prayed before dinner. Like like, right. like what's the big deal? What's sure. the problem? Let's put it. Let's put it in terms we understand. So Sunday, uh, we are we are taping this on Wednesday. Yep. So Sunday, a lot of us made the decision to be centered. So it was three days, Moses and the Israelites, you know, we're going to follow God. Three days, they ended up drinking bitter water, complained. I'm telling you, it's a small step from a complaining spirit to an unbelieving spirit. And then it's a month later. A lot of folks start off New Year with making these resolutions to the Lord and promises to God and things they were going to do. And now we're into almost February. Mm-hmm. February 1st. February 1st, our date. record date. Yep. And, and people have... You know, and the thing is, we made those decisions when we felt so passionate and so close to God. And all I want everybody to understand is that the devil is a master deceiver. Mm -hmm. And he can easily get our eyes off of what we should be focused on onto something that we shouldn't focus on and get so infatuated with what we shouldn't focus on, we can't take our eyes off of what we're focusing on to refocus on Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's uh, the idolatry of the children of Israel right there. When they, mm-hmm. they were worshiping, it, they were they were all they got all focused on the thing. And it was this thing of great value because they all threw in their jewels and mm-hmm. their gold and everything, you know, and, yeah. and and it was this huge valuable thing. This idolatry worship um, whenever we're putting anything, when we're worshiping anything in the place of God, mm-hmm. it's idolatry. Yeah. And we do the same thing uh, in our culture that the children of Israel did in this culture. Back in 1400 BC, um, 1406. Yeah, well, 14, 1446. Uh, <laughs> and I think they they just needed a symbol of something. Like I, it's a, I don't think they really believed that this calf that came that out brought of, them out. The, the, mm-hmm. They knew that calf didn't bring them out of nowhere. Right. They knew that calf. Didn't, they just needed some ritual, without a relationship and without a heart, to be in the way. We'll just follow that. We'll just we'll just do that. I, I don't think they believe. That I think it shows how if we are not consistent um, in our walk with Christ, if we're not consistently in the Word, and that's why this is so important. Yeah. That's why we're doing it as church. If we're not consistent, how quickly yeah we become you know, heart boom boom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we were talking about it in college group last night how there is no just stagnant staying in one place. You're yeah. either you're either growing or mm-hmm. you're falling away. It's, mm-hmm. it's one it's one or the other. And that whole process of sanctification, man, if we're not participating in that process of sanctification, growing in who God has called us to be, then then we're going the opposite direction. Yeah. Uh, that can happen super, super quick. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree with all of that and everything you guys said. Just uh, let's keep in mind that story of God's redemption and mm-hmm. just forgiveness. And every time Israel started to sway or waver, mm-hmm. man, the Lord was right there confronting them. Yeah. And it's still the same today with the Holy Spirit of God. When we start mm-hmm. to waver, when we start to sway, the Holy Spirit of God, I believe, comes in and or speaks up and challenges us and tries to draw us back. And it's, you know, we either, you know, when the Holy Spirit does that, we can either complain or we mm-hmm. can either comply. And Israel spent most of their time <laughs> complaining mm-hmm. instead of complying. And the Lord had this, it was this dance, you know, they would mm-hmm. get right with God and yeah. then they would drift away. They would start to complain and then they'd sin and God would, you know, reel them back in. Again, story of the great redemption that yeah. we're reading about through the Bible. We got to yeah. wrap it up. God bless you. See you Sunday.